Greetings, everybody, and welcome to another edition of AUHSD Future Talks. I'm your host, Michael Matsuda, superintendent of the Anaheim Union High School District. And as our audience knows that this show is dedicated to the future of education, future of careers and jobs for our 30,000 students, and what that means for our communities, uh, not just in Anaheim, but across uh, our wonderful state of California. We've been very blessed to have amazing leaders and thought partners in education, from presidents of uh, colleges and universities to uh, CEOs of company, major companies, to our own teachers and students, um, and, um, and folks that are, that are on the leading edge of transforming uh, K-16 education. And we're very blessed to have uh, one of those leaders, Roman Stearns, of uh, the founder and uh, executive director of a fairly new group that we're going to hear a lot about, Scaling Student Success. Roman, welcome to the show. Thank you, Michael. It's great to be here. So we always start with uh, who you are and what's your journey and story? No, thank you. Uh, well, I was a high school teacher and uh, impassioned by, you know, and, and not strangely, not by kind of impacting individual kids, but impacting the system. That's what got me into teaching in the first place. And I always had this driver to change the education system to make it more relevant for kids, to engage kids and make them more part of the process rather than, re you know, kind of um, passive recipients of the educational process. So. You know, I taught for 10 years and then I got into reform work, not only at the school where I was, where we were doing some leading work, but also um, then went to the county office of education, the UC office of the president, and then with Connect Ed, a nonprofit organization, and now with Scaling Student Success, but all purposed um, towards um, shifting education to become more relevant, more meaningful, more engaging for kids. So it's, it's, it's been a, it's been a journey, um, you know, 30, almost 35 years now. Um, and, you know, lots of highlights I could talk about along the way. Wow. Um, I first heard of you through your involvement with Scaling Student Success. Could you tell us uh, about the genesis of that and um, sort of its purpose? Sure. Well, when I was working with Connect Ed at the time, the California Center for College and Career, now the National Center for College and Career, we were um, promoting linked learning, college and career pathways, and working deeply with school districts around the state of California first and then nationally. But I, I had the opportunity to lead the California Linked Learning District Initiative with nine middle and large, um, mid-sized and large districts across the state of California, including in Southern California there, um, Long Beach, um, LAUSD, Montebello, and Pasadena were the ones in, in, in the LA area that we work with. And all of them were going to wall-to-wall -wall pathways um, across their high schools. Uh, we learned actually from Pasadena, former superintendent there, Edwin Diaz, about this process of developing a graduate profile. And he had convened about 800 stakeholders to get input on one question, which is what do our young people need to be successful post high school? And they came up with a one pager, um, you know, and hung it on the wall. Um, and, you know, their board and their wisdom said, you know, we can't just hang it on the wall. Like we never, we can't really change student outcomes or professional practice by hanging a poster on the wall. And so um, that became their push. And we learned from them and we paused the work in the other eight school districts and said, we need to retrofit and do a graduate profile and facilitate. So we kind of learned as we were flying the plane with these other districts, how to develop a graduate profile. And I always felt there was tremendous power and potential in those documents. Um, but at that time, this was in, oh gosh, about eight, 10 years ago, districts were so wrapped up with Common Core and Next Generation Science Standards and SBAC and like getting their heads and hands around that, that there wasn't the bandwidth to move forward with graduate profiles. So kind of fast forward later, I went with my wife and kids overseas for four years um, learned a lot while there and actually had the chance to lead a process of developing a graduate profile at the school where our kids attended in, in Indonesia. Um, but ultimately um, came back here and thought, you know, now's the time. We seem to have pivoted as a state and as educational organizations 
um, from Common Core, not away from it, because we, but we've just kind of incorporated it into our work and we're not so um, hugely focused on it, towards whole child education. And with whole child education becoming a focus, um, seem to be the right time and place to leverage the power and potential of a graduate profile and help move those posters to practice. So that's what we're about, is moving poster to practice around the graduate profiles, which of course is comparable to the five C's in Anaheim. Yeah, really, uh, this poster to practice, that's the hard piece, right? Because it's easy to have those talking points and talk the, the talk, but not necessarily walk, walk it. So I know I'm on your website right now, Scaling Student Success, and for our audience, uh, it's an amazing website with a lot of uh, insight, deeper insight into uh, what this graduate profile uh, means, right? Um, schools have been sort of imposed uh, what that means uh, throughout the United States for the last 20 years, and most of it has been devolved to uh, a test score, right? Or, API score. So, but you've been a leader in redefining that poster. And in fact, on your dashboard, it says that the uh, California, unlike 36 other states, California has not yet clearly defined what it means to be college and career ready. Uh, they came up with this college and career indicator, CCI, but you uh, you say that it, to a limited degree, may represent a student's readiness. The lack of definition and valid indicators leaves school districts in their local communities to take it upon themselves to define what that means. So let's go a little bit deeper here in terms of what you're uh, looking for and why there is such a disconnect between um, in the state of California, why keep it? Why have it so vague? Uh, Thirty-six other states have actually defined that. Yeah. Well, California, as we all know, is a very large and diverse state. It's hard to get everybody's agreement on anything. Um, you know, and that plays out constantly. And it's just a huge lift to try to create um, a definition of college and career readiness. Um, or create a statewide graduate profile, which a half dozen states have done, another half dozen states are in the process of developing a statewide graduate profile. Um, we could certainly move, move down that path, and Scaling Student Successes is, is attempting to do that um, by launching a pilot next year, um, where we would take, oh, a half dozen or so of the districts that want to go deeper in this work, in terms of operationalizing their graduate profile um, and do so for greater state, um, local and statewide impact. And one of the steps in that process is to um, do an analysis of all of the graduate profiles of those districts and figure out what's in common and hold that up as a prototype for a statewide graduate prof profile um, to demonstrate for the state what a more equitable and holistic system of instruction assessment and accountability would look like um, and hopefully move the state to adopt. So the goal ultimately is to shift the thinking of folks around whole uh, to, to be focused more on whole child education and to get the backing of uh, state infrastructure and you know accountability and reporting system to reinforce a broader definition of student success. You know, I, I think you and I have had many discussions about this, and I know that you've led many discussions about graduate profile. I think the devil's in the details, though, right? Is it not? Because when you talk about, for example, character or ethical development, how do you measure that? How do you measure the... Uh, you know, creativity and innovation. How do you measure collaboration, right? And this is in the classroom, right? This is not extracurricular. This is, these are these are important skills that are lacking in young adults, and uh, you arguably because so much emphasis on teaching to the test uh, have been shunted aside. But you know, to play devil's advocate, how do you how do you measure these? Uh, uh, more qualitative indicators. Yeah, and some are extremely hard to measure, as you know. Um, the, the, the four C's, communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity, you know, four of your five C's. Um, 
are typically measured through performance assessment with rubrics that can be calibrated across teachers, classrooms, schools in a way that there's some level of cross rate of reliability. And that's a viable way that other school districts and states have been able to measure those, the soft skills. Um, but getting beyond those kind of, getting to beyond to some softer skills, um, some of the social emotional outcomes of grit or adaptability or compassion, those are extremely hard to measure and typically are measured more through student surveys um, or simply observation. You know, observation, annotation, documenting, um, artifacts, that kind of thing. And, and I, don't, I don't think the goal here is to build those types of measures into our accountability system. I think we would be shooting ourselves in the foot to do that. Um, rather, building systems that intentionally support those outcomes through the, in, through the learning environments and the instructional methodologies and the relationships that are built and the culture of schools and school districts that nurture or foster those outcomes and assuring that there's plenty of opportunity not only to practice some of those competencies, but to reflect on them, to get feedback, and to be part of healthy learning environments that nurture those kinds of outcomes. Um, and for students, ultimately, to build agency around them, like to be able to cite, you know, cite ways in which they are compassionate. Like, what have you done? Give me some examples of, or stories. Tell me some stories about ways in which you've exhibited compassion in the last week or month or year. Yeah, I think the, the, that's uh, really critical. What you just said about uh, you know we're, we're so we're so conditioned to look at quantitative uh, performance indicators and not qualitative, right? And this is what Matt Coleman talks about in terms of building those systems where uh, the outcomes are more qualitative and not just a devolving to a number, right? We're, we're, we're 20 years of this. And I think that's part of the, the, big, uh, the, the, the big pivot that needs to be made in terms of uh, the, the superintendents and, and people who are making these types of decisions, school board members and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 the system accountable? How do parents hold the system accountable? So um, you are um, trying to develop a consortium of school districts that are willing to go forward and perhaps even um, build uh, a movement to tweak the, the CCI and current dashboard. Could you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So we started with the community of practice of, you know, started with eight and grew up to about 15. And um, is holding steady at about that number of school districts in the state that already have graduate profiles um, and are eager to move from poster to practice and fully operationalize them, but need help, need support. And we do that through networking meetings. Um, we have various different strands of our community practice. And we bring in expert providers, so folks like Matt Coleman, who you mentioned from Inflection, or um, Envision Learning Partners, Connect Ed, National Equity Project, PBL Works, Partnership with Children and Youth. Um, all of these organizations are part of our partnership and provide um, can provide support in terms of facilitation through our community of practice. Um, so networking with one another, learning from each other. But that's that's a relatively light touch kind of way to go. Um, and certainly we've seen school districts make progress and be energized and um, bring focus and attention to their graduate profile. But um, in terms of impact, I think the pilot is the way that will have greater impact on doing more coordinated work across districts and will elevate the work that we do um, to a state level. Um, and did I did I did that answer your question? I, I might have lost track of the. Right? Yeah, I, I think um, you know trying to um, build a coalition of districts that are focused on um, really implementing the the graduate profile, and then um, and hopefully you know I think these districts coming together to put more pressure politically on. Moving, moving the dial with the state in terms of defining what college 
uh, and career indicators are. I mean, that's my understanding of the consortium. Yeah. I know AUSD is part of the consortium. We hope yeah, to be. And we can bring, yeah, and, and, and it's great to have Anaheim and your leadership as part of the consortium. And I think, you know, you're one of the bold leaders who are willing to kind of put your neck out there and, and articulate a bold vision um, when, you know, there are many others who are a little safer let's just say, and or, or politically are unable to take the political risks. And so this pilot will, in a very real way, provide political cover for the bold leaders who are willing to do pioneering work um, in their local communities and districts. Um, I will say that for the pilot, we will bring on board also research partners. Um, we've got several um, that we're having conversations with that would be deeply researching the work that the districts are doing and, and, and of course writing their reports and distributing those reports to legislators and policymakers and community groups and others in a way that builds, uh, brings attention to the work that the pilot is doing and you know through communications. And, and that's critically important because we need to draw attention to the work that's happening, the really good work that's happening in districts like Anaheim. Well, and, and, and again, AUHSD has some longitudinal data, right? We've, we're one of the few districts that do not teach to the test. We don't use the interim assessments. We don't have district benchmarks yet. Our test scores have steadily risen beyond what, you know, demographics would predict. Right. And then UC Irvine, our university partners reported our kids are, um, have a higher GPA um, at UCI than, than the other districts, you know, they follow the cohorts and then our, our kids also are have high, higher uh, persistence rates, right? Which those are the two big numbers that universities look at. So, um, and we're not teaching to the tests and we're, we're, we're really focused on the graduate profile outcomes. Why, let's go back to the why though. Why do you think, why is this graduate profile so important um, as look at, you know, as, as a pivot point in transforming uh, K-16 education? Well, I think of it as a very simple to understand and elegant tool that more broadly defines student success. Um, it's something that if you look at one for literally three to five seconds, you get it. Like in any parent, any student, any policymaker, any researcher, anybody will just kind of say, yeah, that's what we want for our kids. Like it just, it becomes really crystal clear. Um, and so it's powerful in that way. Um, the, as a driver, um, I think what's important is that we can focus our energy on something that's easily understood by many. Um, and then, and of course, there's a lot of sausage making that happens in the background, which you know, you know really well in terms of how to move from poster to practice. But in terms of a vision for moving forward, it serves as a strong vision. Now, what I like about the graduate profile in particular is that it's locally derived um, based on the values and priorities of local stakeholders. Um, it is student-centered. It's outcomes-based rather than input-based. Um, and it's, it's equity-focused. And so those characteristics of a graduate profile make it such a powerful tool to, to drive this work forward. Um, otherwise, we get lost in a lot of very nebulous kinds of things, and we get lost in language, we get lost in images, we get lost in, you know, it's just, it's easier to have a focal point right in front of us. Well, I think going back to this concept of poster to practice, I, I think a lot of districts have that poster language, right, in terms of uh, some sort of, you know, graduate profile that our kids will graduate, you know, college and career ready. I think that's very trite, but they, um, it's kind of this bait and switch what I see going on because they, they say they're doing this and then the practice, this is what you talked about, you know, at the beginning of this interview, yeah. uh, having, how do you get folks to say, Hey, wait a second. That's, you're really not, you're really not delivering on what you're promising the community. Um, so there, you know, we created last year a blueprint on how to bring a graduate profile to life. And there are many different parts and pieces of that blueprint. And some more critical than others, I would say. But part of it is building the right culture and conditions within an organization and community to enable the work to go forward. And, and that gets to many different aspects. But 
part of it is the, the adult, the culture of adult learning, assure that adults have opportunities to engage with one another, to be learners themselves, to experiment, take risks, um, fail, and learn from those failures, just as we encourage students to do. Um, we know that failure is a really critical part of the learning process. Um, when teachers are in those kinds of environments and are able to um, to test their assumptions and um, be pushed on biases and that kind of thing in a trusting environment um, and even be vulnerable, then that creates, one, a model for student learning, but it also creates a safe learning environment for students where they can, um, they're also enabled to learn in those ways. So the culture and climate is critical um, to advance any of this work. And then, you know, then we look at the more technical aspects of it around um, could be project based learning, could be civic learning, which you guys are doing so well, um, could be, you know, career pathways and academies. Um, it could be project based learning, it could be, um, you know, performance assessment. I mean, there's so many pieces of it um, grading for equity, restorative justice practices. I mean, all of it is kind of gets wrapped up in how we deliver, how we move from poster to practice. Um, but there's there's no one right way, and I say this right at the beginning of this blueprint document, like there's no prescription. Every community has to do it in a way that makes sense for them based on their, you know, their culture, their priorities, their values, their assets that they bring to the table, their leadership, um, and we'll, they'll all be on their own journey. But there are some common features that we can lean into together, and that's what we'll do as part of the pilot. You know, um, there's a, what a Zen Buddhist saying, right? That the obstacle is the way, right? And right now the obstacle for all of us have been, how do we deal with this pandemic? That's been the, the um, that's put districts in sort of a survival defensive mode, right? Always dealing with, you know, the pandemic. But there is an opportunity, it does create an opportunity, right? Post pandemic for, to transform schools. And I think that's what scaling uh, student success is all about, is offering a way forward. Yeah. So, you know, um, I think part of the, the message that both you and, and I and others, Matt, and many other uh, leaders are, are saying, look at, um, this is an opportunity to move forward. And UC has put a pause on the SAT, right? There's sort of a vacuum now in terms of what is college and career readiness. So um, you want to comment on that opportunity as we move forward and um, in the closing minute or two that we have. Sure. So, you know, as, as you said, the pandemic has already dismantled some of the inequities and some of the structural barriers that might get in the way in terms of the, you know, the, the Zen saying of the obstacle is the way. Um, so we have some of those obstacles are removed, but it's critically important now. And I think the time has finally come where we can reflect on the lessons we've learned during the pandemic and we can become crisper on our vision and direction moving forward and then pursue that in a, in a collaborative and collective way that will have greater impact, not only in our local communities, but statewide. Um, and, and that's the process we're going to be launching into this spring with the districts that are interested in launching into the pilot is let's start from reflecting with the, yeah. of the pandemic. Let's get clear on where we're going and organizing around, hopefully organizing around a graduate profile of the five C's to drive our work forward. And then what is and then and then the what and the how of what does that look like and how do we do it? Well, Roman, I have uh, really enjoyed our friendship and uh, collaboration with Scaling Student Success. I look forward to uh, really being part of this adventure. I feel like you're kind of like a Lewis and Clark uh, journey that we're on. And uh, I think it's, it's, it's really an exciting and worthwhile one. And um, I really commend you for your courage and perseverance. And on behalf of the district, want to thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming along for the journey. It's, it's, it'll be, a, it'll be a, real, a rocky one, I'm sure, but we'll have fun doing it. We'll have fun doing it, Roman. Right. Thank you again. We look forward right. to hearing more. Thank you. Take care.